Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to a new video. Firstly, before we get started, if I sound a little bit nasally, um, I am feeling a little bit fluish today. I do think it's because I probably got cold last night. I was out last night and I probably got cold and um, that's why we're here. This is why I'm having a cup of tea. This is why I've just taken some vitamins. So just so you know, if I'm feeling, if I'm sounding a little bit different, I'm sorry. Um, so just so you know, if I'm sounding a little bit different, this is probably the reason why. Um, as you can see in the title down below, I kind of felt a need, a necessity to do this video because let's talk about it. You know, let's talk about one year later, COVID, panoramic, Panasonic, what has become of us and what's become of our lives. Now, for most of us, I feel like we are all pretty much going to share the same sentiments, especially with this one. Um, and for a lot of us, maybe not. But I wanted to share where I am now, a year later, what's happened, uh, what has changed in my life drastically, and, uh, you know, what my what I'm looking forward to in the future. What do I feel? What do I think or believe or uh, where my thought process is when it comes to the future, the near future and of course the long term future. So if this is something that you're interested in, um, you know, watching, definitely do stay. Also, follow the channel, subscribe, do all the things. Um, and let's get into the video. So for me personally, COVID, I mean, today is the 28th, I think. Today is the 28th of March. So it's basically a year and two days when South Africa announced uh, the whole COVID thing and being locked down. It's a year today, a year and two days today. Um, crazy times. For me, initially, I, I don't even want to lie. Initially, I thought, what? What's going on? Uh, initially, I thought, what? Do, where is this thing coming from? I had no freaking idea what COVID was, what it was about, all of that. So, of course, I started watching the news and all of that and trying to figure out and like, what a guan with this virus, right? So, uh, watched all of that and um, I won't lie, the paranoia settled in very very quickly and my mental health took a very very hard knock in the early stages i mean 2020 for the most of us our mental health took a serious knock i feel like we were not only stuck with having to deal with this entire panasonic <laughs> pandemic and we had to not only deal with that but our lives were upended and uprooted so much that we had to deal with each other, the aggression, the stresses of having to, you know, you're around uh, people that you're normally not around all day, every day. So now you're stuck with people and you're dealing with that aggression, you're dealing with the emotional turmoil, the mental turmoil. But for me personally, in the beginning, when this was announced, my mental health took a major knock because at that point, I'm like, okay, I'm gonna die. I'm that kind of person that just feels like I am never going to be the exception to the rule. <laughs> I genuinely feel that way about pretty much everything and I can't, I can't stop myself from feeling that way. I genuinely feel like I'm never going to be the exception to, I'm just going to be the rule, uh, honestly. And I felt like if I get this virus, I'm gone. I'm going, I'm going, I'm gone. And um, so I got really, really scared. And of course, not only for myself, but I got scared for my family members. And I got scared for my grandmother and all the elderly members of my family, and my parents, my aunts, my uncles, that kind of thing. So I got really, really frightened. Um, I, I believe it's, you know, just the, 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 um, the fear of the unknown. When you don't know much about anything and how it's wiping out so many people across the globe. So it's not just our little South Africa here, it's pretty much everywhere and how scientists are scrambling to figure out what is this virus, where does it come from, what is it about, how can we treat it, vaccinations, all of that. And there was just no end in sight. As opposed to now, one year later, things are a little bit different. However, at that point, it was the beginning of what was going to be, for me personally, a very tumultuous year where I have gone through 
the most in terms of my emotions, in terms of my personal life, in terms of my uh, financial stability, in terms of just so much in my life. Literally 2020 was that year. And um, that's what I'm going to talk about today. So mental health wise, a year later, definitely much better place than I was a year ago. I feel like my lash is sticking to my, my lash is sticking to my eyelid. That's basically what's happening right now. Um, so a year ago, I was terrible. I was in a terrible, I was terrible. I was in a terrible place mentally. A year ago, I just couldn't, I couldn't make sense of what was going on in my mental space. I couldn't control none of the coping mechanisms that I have learned over the years with regards to my disorder. None of them worked. I felt like I could not control uh, the fact that life and also my life, but life in general for my family members, for friends, life for everyone was just literally spiraling out of control. And for somebody like me, that makes me very uneasy because when I am not in control, I am not comfortable. That's one of the reasons why I just don't even like flying. I mean, I fly because I have to fly, but I hate flying because I don't feel in control. So a year later, I feel a sense of control. I feel a sense of this is what I need to do. One, so that I don't contract this virus. This is what I can do to help myself. Look, if, if, if it happens and I get it, sure. But I will have gotten it uh, 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 knowing that I did everything in my power, drank my vitamins, did this, did this, steamed and drank uh, turmeric, ginger, honey, did, I did, lemon, did all of it. I at least could get it knowing that I tried my hardest to avoid getting it, you know? If it does happen, it does happen, and I'm not touch wood. I'm not saying that I want it to happen. Um, but... I'm not going around living my life recklessly. So there's a there's 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 a lot of control a year later. I feel like there's a sense of understanding of where I am in relation to, you know, what this virus is and what it's about and what I can do to make sure that I do not get it or try my best to protect myself and the ones that are around me. So there's much more of an understanding. A year later, mental health wise, I also feel like I have a little bit more of control with regards to my mental health. I know exactly what I need to do for me to be okay in terms of my mental health. I know exactly what I need to do to, um, you know, nurse myself back to health. If I spiral, which does happen, and I feel like it happens to the most of us, if I do spiral, I know exactly what I need to do to um, uh, make myself better or make it come back towards myself again. But the essence and the core of it is I have some sort of control now in terms of my mental health. So I know exactly you know, you know what it is to make sure that you're okay, so you're going to actively do it. Um, there isn't that sense of paranoia anymore that looms above me, that keeps me from going to sleep at night and all of those things. That's not there anymore because I know more now. We know more about this Panasonic now. We know more about, uh, you know, these vaccinations now. So there's a lot of things that are... Uh, now putting us a little bit at ease. We're still not out of the woods, definitely. And we can't help the fact that uh, we will forever be scarred um, with regards to this time of our lives because so many of us have lost uh, family members in crazy numbers. We've lost friends, the parents of friends, the, the, the we've lost colleagues, we've lost so much and so many people that this has by far been the most tragic year in terms of lives lost that we have ever, ever, ever experienced in our lifetime. And that's, that's talking about most of us. Let's not talk about our grandparents who've gone through wars and whatever. We're just talking about most of us. Most of my uh, 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 demographic of young people. I've never experienced anything like this in my life before. I feel like in terms of economically, <laughs> and I'm going to integrate economically with financially and all of that, this was by far 
for most of us and i'm talking about 99 percent of us this was by far the hardest year that we've ever had to go through in terms of economically financially all of that um for me my financial standing and my financial status um was one of the major reasons major stress factors uh it of my life in 2020 that was one of the biggest things that did not that kept me up, up at night that was one of the biggest things that made me so stressed out that um for the first time in my life i was very uncertain about where i am financially uh in terms of you know what the next month is gonna look like am i gonna get a salary next month am i gonna get half my salary am i not gonna be paid for the next year am i going to have to rely on the uif um benefits that we were getting from the government you know for the people who were working that kind of stuff how am i going to manage my life am i going to have to financially dip into my savings and dip into the, the the rainy 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 day money not not the savings money the rainy 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 day money the money that you never you don't ever 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 well i have money that i don't ever 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 look at ever then there's just money that i save and a certain amount of money that i've saved am i now going to have to dip into that and i did <laughs> i had to unfortunately i had to and now that was not only highly stressful for me but it made me feel really terrible because i went through what many people went through uh people lost jobs because of this virus people lost took paychecks uh what 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 not paychecks people took pay hikes because of this virus there were people who weren't getting paid i personally i'm not i'm, I'm not gonna sit here and lie to you i personally haven't been paid my full salary since april april may last year so that is crazy you need to sit and you need to sit, you need to be with me you need to understand that we were all so highly highly impacted and i got highly impacted because of the line of work that i'm in i am in the construction and engineering sector and that was one of the hardest hit sectors when it came to this panoramic and this pandemic because we had to down our tools we couldn't a lot of the work that we do is outside a lot of the work that we do on buildings and stadiums and all of that and a lot of the work we do employs a lot of people so construction had to down tools for the longest time we were one of the last um um sectors or industries to open and it was just wowza it was really hard for us because we're also an industry that is dependent on the money that comes in each month so that we can make and pay expenses and salaries and this and this and this so we rely on the money that comes in every month from payment certificates and invoices and all of that so that we can pay our employees our suppliers out this so you can fucking imagine the amount of stress that i was under and because i'm also in a senior position we had to make the decision for us not to be paid at all so that we could make sure that some of our employees were being paid so it was fucking insane so this was really really difficult um you know and, and not for me in particular not for me in particular this was hard for me to comprehend for the people that i work with it's even hard for me to talk about it now because for me yes i've got contingencies i've got other ways in which i can get multiple streams of income coming in and all of that that's fine but the people that we work with that for me was the hardest thing to accept that we couldn't do anything about it give me a moment So for me that was really really difficult to have to sit in those meetings and talk to our staff members and all of that about that kind of stuff really really hit me hard. But look, we push optimism. A year on, we are looking 
toward the future. We're looking to make changes. We're doing a lot of things. And we're hoping that this year, we're hoping because it's still too soon to tell, more especially in our industry. We're just hoping that things will be better. The only thing that I feel helps us quite a lot right now is optimism. We, we don't have much of a choice but to be optimistic that things will change. Uh, so many people have lost their jobs or taken paycheck, uh, uh, paycheck hikes, uh, paycheck cuts and all of that, that the only thing right now is to hope and to, to live in hope and faith that things are going to change, that things are going to get better. If not, I don't know. But I don't ever want to think that far. So financially, it's been a hell of a difficult time. It's been a difficult time for uh, myself and many people around me. Um, people who did well financially in, in this last year, man, kudos to you. Okay? Whatever it was that you were doing that brought in the shimane, then kudos to you. But for the most of us, for 90% of us, or whatever the, the ratios are and all of that, for most of us, it wasn't that way. For most of us, we tanked quite a bit. You know uh, what? Things are going to have to change, but there's not much we can do right now, but we will do what we can. And there's that on that. You know what I mean? There's that on that. So, <sighs> a year later, looking on towards the future, I mean, with my relationships, um, definitely a lot has changed. But I feel like with my relationships, a lot has changed for the better. Um, I've become so much closer to my friends. I've become so much closer to my family. And it's funny because you would think so much closer, you think about within proximity to one another, but so much closer emotionally to them, even in a time where we had to socially distance. We've become so much closer to one another because we spend so much of our time checking in on one another, checking in on our mental health and on our mental state, checking in on where we are mentally, how are we doing, how are things going and all of that. So for me, emotionally with my relationships and my friendships and, and my family life and all of that, we have grown so much closer to one another. My relationship with my sisters, my siblings, uh, brothers, whatever. we have become so much closer to one another, even though we don't live with each other physically, that that's one thing that this pandemic has done that has um, changed us for the better. Not only has it made us cleaner human beings, okay? This business of sanitizing and washing your hands all the time, oh my God. Not only has it made us cleaner human beings, and I and I wish we can continue this even way after this pandemic has settled down and blah, 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 because I don't personally think that COVID is going to go away. I feel like we're just going to have to vaccinate and this is now going to be our way of life. And um, so not only have we become cleaner, but our, our, our emotional relationships with the people that are around us are now full of substance and they're full of value and they're rich and um you know we know now we know now that there is so much to live for we know now that life can be taken in the blink of an eye we know now that we could lose someone that we were laughing with just last week we know now how fragile life is another minute <laughs> right so we know now how fragile life is and this Panasonic has definitely, definitely, it's a helicopter. This Panasonic has definitely, definitely, definitely made us value life and it's made us value the ones that are around us even more because it's shown us that the life is fleeting, very, very much so. Um, so a year later, I feel a lot more, uh, at peace. There's a, there's a big sense of peace of mind. There's, um, there isn't that, 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 um, paranoia about what is this, the confusion, the unknowing, um, there isn't any of that. There is just, this is our new life now. This is the new norm now. This is who we are now. And 
we can either live with it and live the right way and continue on with our lives in the hopes that things are going to change financially, blah, 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 all of that economically. Or we can be reckless about it and risk contracting this horrible virus and possibly even losing our lives because it's not gone yet. Yes, we know that a year later we've got vaccines now and there's vaccines and people are getting vaccinated slowly, our essential workers, you know, and we know now that change is coming and the change is on the horizon. But definitely one thing that I have picked up from this is that, you know, I, I approach my life now with a sense of gratitude. I approach my life now with a sense of appreciation that I'm still here, that I'm still, I, I, I'm still standing and my family members are still here. Well, some of them, most of them, what am I saying? Most of them are still here and I'm thankful for that. Um, but I have a, a profound sense of gratitude and appreciation for essential workers and for all the people that stepped up for us in this tough time, even through their fear and even through their anxiety, you know, the doctors, the, the, the JMPDs, EMPDs, the police people, everybody that stepped us, that stepped up for us while we not cowered away in the background, but while we stood back and they stepped up for us risking their lives every day, I have a profound sense of appreciation for those people. And um, also the people and gratitude, the people that just kept us going, right? The social media people, the people we watched that kept us going, the people we would listen to. I mean, I fell in love with 702 over this pandemic because I just listening to Bongani and Clement Magnatella and listening to Clement is my favorite. Oh my God, I love him. I love him. Um, listening to the radio and interacting and listening to people's stories. And oh man, it, it's just, I have a profound sense of appreciation for those people. All of them. I don't know them, but I, I appreciate them. And a year later, we look on and we look on with hope. We look on with faith, we hope for the best, um, and we believe that things will change because they slowly are. And a year later, I can safely say that we made it. We made it. A year is a very long time when you think about how people were losing their lives in the space of a day or two. So a year is a very, very long time. And we can safely say we've made it this far. So. What are your thoughts? A year later, where do you stand? Let me know down below. And uh, this is a serious video, but hey, hey, we needed to sit down and talk about this a little bit. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, please comment, like, subscribe. Also click the notification bell and I'll talk to you in the next one. Sayonara.